Hi, submarine friends. Well, I decided to put the submarine on this trailer. So this is an 18 foot trailer and it's actually gonna work out just fine. So, so the submarine actually will, can move ahead in under two feet. Now that's gonna put a lot more hitch weight on, on the front, but that's okay. Cause I'm hauling this with a one ton dually four wheel drive. So plenty of hitch weight is not gonna hurt anything. Um, I had to put it on like this because I just move it in and out with my Bobcat with an attachment on the end of my forks. So I can't have too much weight pushing down on the tip of the fork. So anyways, um, one of the reasons I put it on the trailer and moved it out is I wanted to test lift the submarine with my crane. Because I'm going to dig a test pool outside here and I'm just going to line it with 6 mil poly. So I'm going to dig a six foot wide trench, about 30 feet long and about seven feet deep, line it with a 20 foot wide piece of uh, six mil poly and just fill it with water. Then I just park this beside the, the pool and I take the crane, pick it up and set it in the pool. But I was quite concerned that I couldn't lift it with that crane, but it picks it up like nothing. So I'm pretty pleased about that. So now I'm going to work on getting the windows installed and then um, I have to uh, finish connecting the radiator. I was, I was missing a piece. I shouldn't call it a radiator, it's a cooler. So I have to uh, weld that piece to the cooler and then put a few plugs in it. Once the windows are on, um, it's pretty much ready to go into test pool for a, for a trial. Um, well, for testing the weight and balance and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not going to be able to do that for a while because in two weeks, I actually have to go back to work for about six weeks and then I'm off for the summer. So, unfortunately, I have to make money. So, working six weeks is not the end of the world. I'm not complaining, that's for sure. So, once I'm, once I'm finished those two jobs, then... Uh, I'll carry on and get it into the test pool and try it all out. I'm pretty excited about that, as you can imagine. So I'm going to have to still put a bunch of weight in the front, but I'll put it in when it's in the water. And then I can just keep adding weight until I've got it right. Then I'll take it out of the water and I'll attach that weight to the outside of the submarine. And I'm, it's going to be in the form of steel plates along the side of the, uh, the box keel here. Plus I want to add a couple of lead weights to my drop weight because my drop weight's only about 50 pounds right now. So I'd like it to be in the 150 pound range. Technically, the drop weight should be sufficient enough to surface the submarine with one of the, with the largest external tank full of water. So if one of those air tanks failed, they would fill with water and I would lose 240 pounds of buoyancy. So theoretically, I should have a 240 pound drop weight, but I'm in a unique position where I have an emergency hand pump on my variable ballast tank, which will always be completely full of water when I submerge. So I can drop the weight, plus I can pump water out of the variable ballast tank if that happens to be the problem. So I've got it covered. But a heavier drop weight is good, so I'm going to make it as heavy as I can without it interfering with anything in the front. So that's where it's at. I had to stop for a while because I had to do maintenance work on my machinery for my jobs. And I don't want to leave that to the last minute in case I need to order a part or something. So the machines are all ready to go. They just need a pressure wash and we're back in business. So that's it. That's what I'm doing today. I'm going to see if I can get the windows going in. Ciao.